well hopefully as you can see it's turned white on the inside it's been uh, skinned with glass fiber and, uh, and I have to say it's really looking cracking so uh, roll the titles and uh, and I'll show you around this while the titles are running After your suggestions, I decided it was a good idea to add side windows, so uh, I used this laser level to um, get them nice and square. I put this little sequence together just to show you how it all fits together. There's a, a top, a centre section in the middle and two clamshell sides and it really covers the mill really rather nicely. I, I'm really pleased with the way it's all fitting together. So here we go. This, this, um, this, my very first ever attempt at fiberglassing, has had uh, sort of clock. That's probably had an hour and a half or so to uh, uh, start to cure. So it's very, very green at the moment. Which you've just seen me uh, cut the uh, outside off, uh, to cut the excess off. Um, I'm going to leave it overnight and see how hard it gets for tomorrow because you can still, you can still, it's slightly tacky. Um, I think, in all honesty, it went as well as could be expected for my very first attempt. You can see a lot of the fibre in, in here, a bit light on resin in, a, in, um, in quite a few spots. There you go, to give you some sort of scale, there's my um, finger. And uh, you can see that, that uh, I didn't put enough resin here to fully fill the, the weave. I'll show you a piece that's got fully filled. This weave here is completely full and um, totally impervious to water. Um, I, I haven't used as much resin as I... Uh, uh, when I was doing it I thought I was using a lot of resin but I've just looked at the, at the tins and uh, I've got plenty to go so I'm not too worried about it. The, the other thing is the kit comes with this stuff, which is a surface tissue that uh, takes out all of the, uh, so you can't see the glass fibre um, individual strands. So it needs a really, for use in a mill, I think this this um, slightly open weave is going to get full of full of schmoo. So um, I, I cut a tiny little piece of that um, surface cloth off and put it on the corner here. Uh, and it's going to come out really quite smooth. So um, uh, just sort of that, that isn't even fully through the. Uh, uh, it's not fully consolidated through the through the tissue. The um, I'll say that again so it actually makes sense. The, uh, the the piece I put on here didn't get the there wasn't enough resin left, so I couldn't get it all the way through the, the to the surface. But looking at it and looking how flat how flat it's going to be. I think it's going to come out really quite nice. So um, uh, I'm off out for the afternoon and um, we'll sand this tomorrow and then put the next layer on it and I will get on with the rest of them. But uh, all in all I'm quite chuffed with that. I think that's come out really quite nicely. It is the following day and uh, this stuff has gone 
totally hard. This um, surface tissue is a really thin sort of gossamer, lightly spun glass and um, so that should give me a nice uniform finish on the, on the very top. This is an experiment. Uh, I've mixed up uh, half a litre, 500 millilitres. Uh, I'm just about to catalyse it uh, and then I'm going to do as much of this as I can in one hit uh, just to, to get it done to be perfectly honest. The, the temperature in here in the workshop is 20 degrees and, whoops, and the humidity is 62% according to my wall clock which is purest Chineseium so we'll see. Anyway, I'll get on with this. Uh, I'll time lapse it because um, you've just got to concentrate on this, you haven't got time to fiddle with the camera and I don't want to get it covered in uh, resin. Apparently you should, uh, and I think this makes absolute sense, um, cut all the pieces you need to do your, your piece, your panel or whatever before you um, start laminating it. Just to show you, this, uh, this chop strand mat is unbelievably easy to just pull apart and um, if you, if you cut it with scissors you end up with a mark in the in the surface that you can see if you do it um, and pull it apart then the fibers will blend into each other and you won't be able to see the edge So it's the following day and uh, I thought we'd have a quick catch up. Everything has gone, gone off, it's as hard as rock and um, as you can see there's a lot of sanding needed. Uh, all of these parts, because I've added the thickness of the glass fibre which looking at it is about a millimetre, a millimetre and a half thickness. Uh, the parts are not going to fit together on the mill again so I've got to sand them all back uh, and remove whatever I need to remove in order to make them all fit then I can finish them off uh, for good so uh, finish wise talking of finish uh, this is more or less what I'm looking for um, this has got one layer of 
what is it, 250? Oh, I'll put it on screen, I have to look it up. Um, one layer of chopped strand mat, and then uh, a surface tissue over the top, and, uh, and then it's had a, uh, another hand-painted resin uh, finish over the top of that. That's pretty good, that's, that's the sort of thing I'm looking for. However, I kind of think that I don't need the surface tissue. Uh, I think um, this little duct has just been done, there's no glass fibre on here at all, this is just resin over hardwood. And, uh, and that's come out pretty good, pretty smooth and, uh, and nice. So I'm thinking that maybe sanding back, the, the, the rest of this has got one layer of top strand mat. Uh, I'm wondering if I should just sand it all back and then hand paint one more layer of, of resin over the top. That will probably be enough. If I put surface tissue on, then I need to put another layer of um, a resin over the top of that. So, and I don't think I need it. So, uh, consumable wise, I've used about five meters, five by, five meters by 900 wide chop strand mat. And I've used five kilos of Christic 446 PA laminating resin. So, uh, yeah. I've used about half of the consumables that came in this uh, in this kit. So here we are. Everything's been sanded, ready to uh, uh, for its final coat of resin, and uh, I'm just uh, in the process of putting it all together again, just to make sure that it all fits because uh, it's not going to. So uh, let's see how far it go I get before it all comes to a grinding halt. Yep, modifications needed. Well, I think that's proved the, um, uh, the, the slope and sides of this thing work. That's fallen straight through to the bottom. Let's try this one. Spot on. That looks a success.
Well, got it all in with the, uh, with the exception of um, one threaded insert, which is pulled out just is up here. So uh, I'll araldite that in. And uh, sorry, the American viewers who don't, may not have araldite, epoxy resin. All right, there it goes. Oh my, that's pretty bright, I have to say. I'm going to think about this overnight before I decide what to do. But uh, this panel has had the surface tissue. Hang on. Oh, has had a layer of this really thin surface tissue over the top of it. And uh, you probably can't see it particularly well, but that is damn smooth. That really is smooth. Um, and it, one more coat of uh, a resin over the top of that, and that's going to look almost like glass. Ironic, really, because it's glass fibre. Um, these panels, the rest of the, of the uh, mill has not had the uh, surface tissue on it. This is just chop strand mat with, impregnated with resin. And you can see all the fibres and the weave. Now I don't know whether my best bet is to put a layer of um, uh, tissue over the top of this, then another layer of, um, of resin or just another layer of resin. So I'm going to have to think about that. And um, just by way of demonstration, here's the here's a, a window, side window, which I think was worth the hassle to put in. Uh, needs a bit of fettling to get it to fit. But uh, yeah, quite chuffed with that. You can see how it all, it's all going to fit with a bit of um, i take that out for a second. With a bit of uh, sealing um, draft excluder, probably good enough, uh, type of material round, round here on the clamping face, it will um, keep the, the schmoo in, uh, hopefully. I'm, I'm going to drill holes through here and tap these and put little button head uh, stainless screws in from the outside to hold the windows in. Oh! oh. Another drill bites the dust. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, do hit the like and subscribe and the uh, notification bell. That way you'll get told next time I load a video. Um, this, uh, I've decided I'm going to um, uh, cover the two, the two clamshell sides and not don't have any surface tissue over them. Uh, and I'm gonna put some surface tissue over uh, and then another layer of resin over everything. Uh, and that should give it a really nice smooth finish so none of the crap that comes off the, the mill should stick to the side. It should be easily washed off. So um, yeah, I'll do all that off camera because there's only so much you can watch of a bloke stippling with a paintbrush. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, we're coming to an end on, on the top half of this. It's nearly done and let's need then to move downstairs and do the bottom half which is going to be a lot quicker and a lot simpler because I know this, this, this isn't a particularly popular sort of strand of, uh, of my videos, but uh, you know, it's all part of the journey, the journey as they say these days. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Several days later, I have completed these, uh, these parts and uh, I'll just show you this one over here. Yeah, it's all, uh, it's all gone remarkably smooth and uh, hopefully we should be all right getting the coolant and swarf out of the machine. So uh, I will put these out of the way and we can start work on the bottom half. Hurrah, it's taken forever. <laughs>